and here we go. Oh, we should be starting up here in just a moment, but let's wait, let's be patient. Oh my goodness, here we are. Here we are. Oh, it's here. Okay, so just so you know, there are captions in case you need them. So take advantage of that should you want them or need them. You know, I, I just think that's a good thing to have here. It's a good thing to do. But welcome. Welcome. We are here for Art Night. And if you haven't been to an Art Night before, let this be your first Art Night. And the thing is, we get to start off with just this wonderful bit of joy. So I started this piece last Saturday. So so this is now two weeks in a row uh, of working on this single art piece. This wonderful single art piece. I'll move the the ease uh, <laughs> the easel the palette out of the way in a moment. But yes, if you need uh, captions, make sure to turn them on. We have them um, because I I just yes. I'm not going to get on that too much. But there are captions if you need them. But let me go ahead. I'm going to give a quick little description of where we are. Uh, we are in my uh, studio and art space. This is where I do almost all of my live streams from. I say almost all because I do a lot of them outside. Um, but <clears throat> this is where we do the majority of the streams, uh, where I share art with you, where I write, where uh, we read poetry and books and, and all sorts of other fun things. Occasionally gaming, drawing, you know, just lots of different things. And in this wonderful space that we're in right now, uh, we're going to be making some art. Uh, we're going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy it. So depending on where you're joining me right now, I want you to be aware there are links somewhere nearby. <laughs> uh, because I'm joining you, of course, across many different platforms. But depending on where you're joining me, there's links nearby where not only... Can you go ahead and get things like this palette, uh, but also the canvas boards that I paint on, um, the paints that I use, uh, that too. So, you know, like these, these wonderful uh, Shuttle Art Vintage paints that I, I've been using. And then, of course, there's also the Cali Art acrylics that I use. Uh, so those are available, um, but so yeah, there's going to be a, a link somewhere nearby where you can check that out. And I have an Amazon storefront. I also have my website where you can get my art prints, my t-shirts, all of that stuff. Um, as well as things like art bags, uh, pencil cases, but, um, you know, it's just a wide variety of things. And we have lots of options and lots of choices. Uh, I will be using these wonderful new brushes that I have. Uh, these were a gift for the holidays, so I'm going to be using these. I used these last week. I'm also going to be using my, my standard, uh, these long brushes that I like to use. Wonderful wooden handles, and I like them. I'm going to be using these, too, for some of this. We're going to be using a combination of paints, uh, both the Shuttle Art acrylic vintage paints. Again, let me grab one of those. So I'm going to be using things like these Shuttle Art acrylic vintage paints, which are available uh, on my Amazon storefront. I'm also going to be using these Cali Art acrylic paints. These are also available on my storefront, my Amazon storefront. We're going to be using those as well. I'm going to be using this nice big wooden palette uh, for for all my paints. This is also available on my, my Amazon storefront. But, oh, and let's just move it out of the way. So if you weren't here last week, um, we did all of this. We got here with this wonderful piece. Um, I've been... I've been experimenting with different styles and different kinds of painting. 
and this is an example uh, of that style that I've been trying. If you come to any of my art workshops or you've seen any of the pictures I post up online, I do a lot of uh, really nice charcoal portraits, and I do um, a lot of abstract work and painting, uh, but I also do like a lot of faces, a lot of eyes. There's just a wide array of different art dabblings I do, and in the end, uh, kind of the fall of 2022, I started getting into a more um, kind of impressionistic and kind of more experimental uh, style. And I produced several really nice pieces. And I'm continuing on with that in the beginning of 2023. So this is all going to... So originally, that whole series of paintings was my Fall 2022 series. But now it's looking like it's going to be carrying through. And, um, you know, it might be broken up into a couple of parts. So the Fall 2022 series is rolling into the Winter 2023 um, series. So yeah. But we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to tell you the paints as we go through. Uh, I want to work on this hair. I want to work on this face. There's a scarf here that I'm going to work on. There's this background, which is really interesting to me, but I think we can make it better. Uh, there's this armor. We're going to make that nicer. This sword, kind of like a gown. And all of this long like over exaggerated very dramatic very windswept hair and we're going to be putting work into that so i'm not going to i'm not going to make you wait too much we're going to go ahead i'm going to grab one of these small brushes right here and we're actually going to dive right in we're going to start painting because this is a piece that i think is going to take a little time it's going to take some you know real concentrated work so what I'm actually going to be starting with is I have this amethyst and this is from Shuttle Art Acrylic Paint. So this beautiful amethyst vintage paint, we're going to be using some of this. And I'm going to come in and add more detail to this scarf. Ooh, pardon me. We're going to add more detail to the scarf and make that much more defined. So that's the first thing I'm going to be doing. Actually, I'm not going to use that little brush. I'm going to get one slightly bigger. Slightly, whoop, slightly bigger. So we're going to be using this here. So other than just this uh, Shuttle Art Amethyst from their vintage line, I'm also going to be using uh, this Shuttle Art Vintage White. So this Vintage White is going to end up on here too. You know, we just, we need to have some fun. We need to experiment. And in our experimentation, we find growth. Now, the good thing, and uh, kind of the interesting thing about these shuttle art paints, these vintage paints, is they kind of delaminate. So the pigments separate, they have a very viscous quality, but they lay on smooth, they lay on wonderful. I love the texture, I love the way they work. So we're going to take this brush here, a slightly small brush. Uh, I don't actually know what size this is, but we're going to be using this brush here. And I'm going to get some of this amethyst right from the get-go. I, I just want to immediately start. And one of the first things I'm doing is I'm going to lay some brushwork in and add some body to this scarf that I started last week and one of the big reasons I need to do this is because of the opacity of some of this and because of the viscosity you know I really need to hammer in our details and and start building up a very evident Form, shape, contour. 
I don't want this scarf to be lost uh, in my work. I don't want that to happen. I want it to be very clear. Well, not clear. I want it to be very uh, noticeable. I don't want to lose the drama of what I'm doing. And of course, the scarf is wrapped up around the face, so we're going to go ahead and put some more in here. And don't worry, don't worry, we're still early enough in this piece that I can be a little messy. Now something that I thought of is we only see like one band of the scarf kind of blowing behind like that and then the scarf up on the face. But I really need to figure out, like, where's the other part of this scarf? Like, is it tucked away? I don't necessarily have to think about it that much, I don't think. But I already am. And I, have, I think I'll need to address that in some way within the piece. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. But, you know, there we go. Look, at, I already have a much thicker base. And once that amethyst dries... I think that's going to look great. But now that I have that, I'm actually going to take some of that white that I already have, and I'm going to mix it in with some of the amethyst, because I want to immediately go over everything that I just put back here. Well, not everything. Actually, I'm going to just kind of hit the underside. And I'm going to put that right in there. And then get some of that up here, too. Yeah, that's going to work. That's fine. I'm not going to worry about it too much because we still have so much to do. You know, we still have so much to do. But I've already taken the time to put more thought and put more attention into our piece. Now, this is actually just a standard that I, I like to use, so I'm just going to tell you about it for a second. Ooh, there we go. I gotta shake it up. This is actually one of my apple barrels. I, I'm only using two apple barrel paints in this entire piece, and it's going to be yellow flame, I don't know if I can find where I just set the other one. Uh, bright yellow. So yellow flame and bright yellow. And these are from Apple Barrel. I'm going to be putting these in here too. But I actually want to just grab this yellow, fr yellow flame. And I'm going to start picking out the hair more. As it's still in its early stages. Um, now for this, I'm actually going to be using this number two... Uh, flat brush, this long number two flat brush. And that's that right there. Get a little bit of this paint. Not too much. A little bit. And I know there's already like a lot of yellow here. But one of the things I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start to lighten up some of this that's down here. Because I am going to be layering over this and adding more depth. And I just want to start to get some of that implied depth working here. And that's one of the biggest things. It's implied depth. Implied. Because we need to begin creating lighting, halos, layers, all these different effects, which in the end will bring our total piece to life. You know, so I'm just getting that in there, getting it in there now.
I just think that we can do so much with these uh, with these colors and with this kind of style. Uh, and that's exactly what I intend on doing. Getting as much out of this as I can. So now I've added like these really light sections. Um, we're going to have dark sections, light sections. We're just going to keep going. And in the end, I'm going to end up with a lot of different tones. So now that I've done that, I'm actually going to get just a little bit of white. And I'm just going to work a little bit of white in there. Just a little bit. Because we can't have flat color. You know, no flat color. Uh, and yes, is this a little bit flat right now? Of course it is. I'm going to just put some of that over that. Put some of that over that. So I hope everyone is enjoying their weekend. I hope everyone is doing great. So there we go. That's just a little bit of that. Not too much, not too little. Art is oftentimes just that. Not too much, not too little. All right. Now, I like the way that these vintage paints uh, dry. I like the way that they kind of come together. But there's stuff that we need to do with it. And amongst that stuff, one of the things we have to consider is how dark it dries. Uh, as you can see, like this has a really dark quality to it, which kind of gives it that old feel. It feels older. It feels, you know, set in. And because it feels set in, you know, uh, we we have to take it to take the time ourselves to brighten it up as much as possible. So I'm going to grab one of my Cali Art Grays. So this is a 6842 gray. I'm going to grab one of these. I'm going to use another small brush once I get it in hand. So actually, I'm going to use a really small brush here. All right. That's my little tiny brush. And I'm going to mix some of that gray with some of the white. I kind of have an idea for the face, uh, but the face just looks so flat. So I need some of that gray, and I need some of the white, and I'm just going to mix them. So now I'm mixing the gray from Cali Art with the white from Shuttle Art. And I want to try to make sure that you always know like which tones I'm using. So I will try to always use the names of the brands as well as the names of the paints. So once I get that mixed up here, I'm going to get a little bit of it. So you can kind of, hopefully you can kind of see that a little bit probably can't see it very well but and I'm actually just gonna come in here on where I was doing the face beforehand I'm gonna start to even out some of the tone of the face just a little bit of evening out of that tone we have a lot to do here like so much to do but one of the things that I really need to do now before it's too late is to start really building in and blocking in some of what's gonna be the essentials of our character <laughs> so you can see their face is getting really light now really light and and that's just an essential little mix right there just essential. I need that mix so I can start to solidify our shape and our character. Now, 
the next color that I'm going to actually start building more on with this is Ash Black. So Ash Black is another shuttle art. And this is another vintage. So this Ash Black Vintage, I'm going to be getting some of this on there. And again, I'm going to be going for a small brush. Let's see how small I can get. Oh, you know how hard it is to find the smallest possible brush when you're looking? Like, okay, so here we go. You can see, like, this This is our, our little brush. Just our little brush. And I'm going to take some of that ash black, and what I'm going to be doing is... Uh, darkening in more of our costume on the character their clothing but not just that i'm actually going to really start solidifying shapes because there's certain shapes in here i don't want to get lost but i also need to have really solid because eventually i'm going to add a metallic gold to some of this because I think that metallic gold is just going to add a lot. Hey, Silver Fox, joining us on Twitch. So glad to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome for Art Night. So yeah, we're just going to start adding this in. Just a little tiny bit of this ash black. I got to solidify certain shapes. And I'm using this little tiny brush. And this is, again, this is an Ash Black from Shuttle Art. It's in their Vintage line, which is a, which uh, you can get on my Amazon storefront. I mean, that's not the only place you can get it, but it's a very good place to get it. And I would appreciate it if you did. Little self-plug. It's okay. So I enjoy being able to come back to an art piece. I like being able to have things that take long periods of time. I have some really big paintings uh, stored away. A couple which are available on my website, my personal website. Um, and they're just these enormous paintings that took me hours and hours and hours to do. And I love sometimes just having the ability to do something grand but there's also something to be said for being able to do something which is just really solid and really thought through and just putting your effort and your energy and yourself into something and with this new kind of aesthetic and style that I've been working in I I think that we can get that I think that we can get that kind of grand nature and I don't mean grand as in like grandiose or no I mean grand like the um oop, little bit of come here that's okay I mean grand in the sense that it's not it's not just a quick over and done it's it requires just that level of additional commitment that level of that level of real contemplation thank you so much you know uh i i just i think a lot of the visual for this that's making it look really interesting comes down to these different paints you know it just gives us something different to work with all right while i'm doing this i'm going to grab another small brush i'm going to get some of that white even though i just laid down all that black uh, there's like these kind of sections here and the more I think about it the more I kind of like the idea that this is definitely 
kind of, uh, an almost, not old-fashioned, but that idea of an old-fashioned style dress. Like, it's armor and a dress. That's, that's what our character is wearing. Armor and a dress. I think that, you know, you're getting that sensation of the armor with our uh, pauldrons and this Bazaban style arm piece. You know, we got the sword. So there's definitely that armored quality. But there's also this beautiful stylized nature. So I'm going to be adding some various brightening up of it. And like even the scarf right now is looking a lot better. The scarf is looking so much better. Because I added so much more color to it. Make that a little bit bigger. We have kitties who are getting way too involved in the painting area. If you have cats or pets, I'm sure you understand. We cannot do anything without them coming to say, Hello, how are you doing? And actually, I'm going to pull that up a little bit more. It'll look good right there. And then let's see. This might take a couple of adjustments to get to look right. But I, I kind of need to make that torso a little more obvious. It's a little more obvious now. Oh, oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. You know, they just get up and then it's like, mm, my seat now. My seat now. That's how it is. My seat now. There we go. Oh yeah, look at look at how that silhouette's just changing bit by bit. And that's what I want to do. I want something that looks I won't say ma yeah, I'm going to say majestic. I want to capture something that kind of looks majestic. But I also need it to have realistic proportions. Uh, that's something, uh, not real, actually, let me correct that. Dramatic proportions. I don't necessarily want them to be realistic, but I want them to be something that you can see and believe. If that makes sense. Hopefully it does. All right. <sighs> We're already making so much progress here. Now, I'm going to go ahead, and I think my face has dried enough that I can get some more of the white. Because, again, uh, this is about the aesthetic, and this is about capturing my character. So, my character here does not have... Like, they're, they're very much... Um, Stark, contrasting colors, and it just increases the visual drama of the piece. And that actually allows me to cut that eyebrow down some. There we go. So now that eyebrow's a little bit thinner. Here's something cool about painting um, and art in general. And this is something that I say in my art workshops as well. You know, there's no mistakes. There's no mistakes in art. There's only chances to find something new. That's not necessarily how I say it, but that's how I'm going to say it right now. Uh, there's no mistakes in art. There's no mistakes in art. Like, even this profile of this character... It's very simplistic. Like, you know where the eye is. You know where the nose is. You know where the arms, the body. Everything is there. Everything that you need to be there is there. All right. And this is just something I'm thinking about, because I keep looking at this wonderful amethyst scarf, 
but I don't think it sticks out enough from the background. I'm sure many people uh, can look at that and agree. It doesn't stick out enough from the background. So let's see what I have that I can use to adjust that with. Ooh, here's a good choice. Okay, so I'm gonna use the Cali Art Vermilion uh, because this scarf is not sticking out enough, so I'm gonna put this Vermilion on it and I'm gonna see if that brings it out more. And this is all detail work today. Like, we're not doing anything really heavy. I want to stick to the details. Oh, thank you, yes, I think it's a great color. Um, they're all great colors. I, I'm really liking the shuttle art. I'm really liking how it mixes and how it plays together, but I just want this vermilion because I think this vermilion is going to make our scuff, scarf pot more. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just lightly adding it. So I'm using a very stiff very intentional short stroke brush style. And we might need a couple of, actually I kind of like how that layers already, but let's just make sure that this is big enough because we have to make sure that it looks again, believable. We can't just have, like, oh, there's a scarf there. No. There has to be, oh, look at that scarf. All right. So I like the vermilion. Actually, that lays really nicely over top of the amethyst. And I think the amethyst was a perfect starting color. Oh, my goodness. Now we're gonna have to be again slow and intentional. Um, <clears throat> slow and intentional. I don't think I can emphasize that enough. When it comes to uh, painting, sometimes we have to be very slow, very intentional. Sometimes we have to find exactly how something's gonna lay down how something's gonna react. And this is actually another instance where I can remind you there are no mistakes. Like I decided that color wasn't the color for this scarf and now it's not. Uh, but I love this amethyst and I wanna use it. Uh, so I'm gonna have to find a place where it can shine. I'm going to find a place where the amethyst sh Amethyst can, yeah, if I can say the word, where the amethyst can shine, we're going to find a place. All right, there we go. Now we have this wonderful vermilion scarf. And I actually think that looks, it looks better because it sticks out better. Like I don't have to wonder where the scarf is anymore. It doesn't become part of the background. It's not, it's not the same as any other color. And that just sticks along with our ideas that we want to have nice contrasts and we want to have just really clear conceptualization and I'm just going to go ahead I'm going to smooth it out uh, kudos by the way absolute kudos to both the people at shuttle art and the people at Cali art for making something so easy to work with it's so easy to work with and I appreciate that a lot <clears throat> But we are not going to get bogged down in that because I am, I forgot a color. I forgot a color and that will not set. But. 
and that color is yellow ochre. Now this is from the Shuttle Art Vintage line. Uh, so this is yellow ochre, and I'm going to go back in and I need to do some more on the hair. But I'm not going to just use the yellow ochre on its own. I'm going to be mixing it with that flame yellow I was using beforehand. So I need a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of flame yellow. And we're going to use those, a very bright and then a very warm medium. And I'm going to make a new color, which I think is going to blend in very well. And so that's that's the color I've mixed. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it, but you're going to be able to see it when I start putting it in the hair. And then side of the brush. I'm going to have to use more yellow ochre. This is too bright. So let's get a little more of that yellow ochre. It's too bright, too bright, uh, and that's something you just got to be aware of when you're doing your work. Sometimes things just come out and it's like, mm, that didn't work, that didn't work. I'm going to have to do a lot more shaping in the darks. But I have so much dark there already that I don't think I am going to have to worry about it. I'm going to grab a little more of the yellow ochre, but just on its own, and start to work it in. And then a little bit of my mixed tone. And then let's get some of the flame yellow because I don't want to lose any of that. Just a little bit of the ochre. Ugh. I'm loving it. Now that I have some of that ochre just on here, I'm just gonna so get some of that in there. And and now we're getting into you know, some of the wet blending as it were. But you have to be careful with the Shuttle Art acrylics. They, they are absolutely wonderful paints, but uh, they dry quickly. So if you're going to be doing like what I'm doing now and trying to work your... Um, wet blend you got to do it quick 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 don't wait and i'm really going to fill up in this space i'm actually going to make that hair even more dramatic than it already is but right now i'm going to start cutting in there and uh, that's going to help me start to build up more of this kind of silhouette. You know, this is, after all, a dramatic character. So we need a dramatic silhouette. We need a dramatic silhouette, and I have to actually now accommodate for the fact that the hair is now much longer. Why is the hair much longer? Because it's cool. I actually think that's the best reason. <laughs> because it's cool that the hair is just that long. And just that kind of interesting. So let's, let's actually pump up the volume. Let's pump up the volume a bit. And then let's also pump up the drama. Pump up the ball. So like now this is taking on not just a dramatic flair, but it's taking on an other, a very fantastical aspect. It's, it's a very fantastical aspect to a character which realistically uh, doesn't necessarily 
follow the rules of what's possible so much as the rule of what's interesting. And I think that's also something really important that we can't take for granted. Sometimes what makes a good character isn't uh, what's possible, but what's interesting. And that's what this is. It's a character. All right, I'm going to get some of the white. I'm going to mix that in here really quick. So I want this character not only to be dramatic, not only to be visually interesting, but also to have a certain, I don't know, um, thank you, thank you. You know, I'm, I, tr I try my best, I try my best. And I actually, since that's getting longer, let's go ahead. And just add a little bit of tail to the end of our scarf. Just a little bit of tail to that scarf. All right, there we go. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. This is this is really where art starts to become. Uh, just a like an exploration. You know, that's what I'm doing, is I'm exploring. <clears throat> and in that exploring, I'm finding, I'm finding the purposes and really like the experience of, well, what about this? What about that? What about um, all of these things? All right, I'm gonna use a really small brush really quick. Well, not a really small brush, but a smaller brush. And I'm gonna just go ahead. And first things first, I gotta do that. So the first thing I'm actually doing is I'm taking more yellow ochre and I'm starting to build in more of the shape of this sword that's down here. But I actually want to tie something interesting in. Because we have that, that vermilion, I actually think it would be really cool if the sheath of our sword was also vermilion. This now has become an accessory color for our character. So we have this vermilion sheath with this vermilion scarf on this black clad warrior in this beautiful long dress. And um, I'm gonna take this as a fun moment. Uh, I made that sheath really wide, but to be fair, that's actually not unrealistic for like an arming sword so i uh, we'll just go with that that's possibly an arming sword but i'm going to take this as a moment to talk about uh culture you know something which is just worthy of note and just kind of historically interesting uh for the most part you would have almost no ability in a large a large amount of uh, the medieval period to discern whether it was a, a man or a woman wearing a specific suit of armor. You'd have almost no way to know. I'm actually just taking some black now. I'm just really lightly working that in. Am I making the most realistic piece I've ever done? Of course not. Am I having a lot of fun doing this? You bet I am. Because I'm actually just, I'm adding little things. Like that little line there, which is barely perceptible, is like a shadow. It's a shadow. That's what it is.
and now I just added a little more shadowing in there. All right, since I'm using some of this black, let's go ahead. I need to hit that again. Because this is a fa fantasy character, I can actually make that bazoo band more dramatic. It's not actually a bazoo band, but that's the shape, so that's what I'm calling it. Um, in armor, a bazoo band was a type of um, van brace or or bracer, which had this long uh, protrusion out of the back. So, like, if you kind of straightened your arm out, it would cover the joint of the elbow entirely uh, and just like go kind of up the arm slightly uh, but when you bent your arm you could see the whole additional part of what would be called a cannon so arm armor uh, before before cannons were a thing arm armor was the whole thing was called a full cannon or a cannon so you had an upper cannon and a lower cannon or um, a a bracer, a van brace, and then uh, I can't remember what the upper arm was called right now. But just uh, some interesting notes on terminology. History fact of the day. You gotta have a little of that, right? Alright, and I'm looking at this character right now, and... I actually think that I should even bring uh, the scarf further forward. So I'm going to grab um, an angle brush and some more of my vermilion, which just has a wonderful viscosity to it. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm not bringing the whole thing forward, and the reason I'm using the angle brush is that I I can just hit in this very specific way. But I think that actually is going to look better because it kind of looks like now the scarf is really more far out. Like this was something that was tucked over this person's face and they pulled it down. So now we have that. And I just need a little bit of black. And I'm going to be using another flat brush. And just with this little bit of black, I'm going to come in here. And I'm just going to put a little more dark on that little eyebrow where that eyebrow was suggested. And I got to get a lot of this black off my brush. just want to kind of enhance that eye so now that eye has some enhancement and because I'm doing this right now I'm just gonna go ahead and bring some enhancement in for the face shape And now that's like some more defined uh, profile, some more defined profile. Uh, my character is really developing like a visible personality. Um, and at the same time, it's starting to take on a very stylized quality. Just like this really nice stylized quality. So I'm gonna grab some lemon yellow from Cali Art. So this is Lemon Yellow from Cali Art. Because we're not done at all, even remotely close to done with the hair. I don't need a lot of it. I just need a little bit. I'm going to be getting another angle brush. This is a number four angle brush. Just 
just a little bit of that. Because uh, when it comes to hair tone, we need to be very mindful of the fact that hair is lots and lots of strands. And due to that fact, it is never a uniform color. Uh, I mean, if you just look at yourself in the mirror and you look at the way the light hits your hair, or you just look at yourself in general, you're going to see, number one, at no point in time does your hair have like a very particular single tone. You really have to be under like perfect lighting for it to look like your hair is all one single color. So just working some of this lemon yellow in is going to kind of pop some of our hair out. Just pop, pop. And it's also adding, I would say, kind of like more of the light and it's adding some more warmth now let's just grab a little bit of the flame because that's lighter a little bit of the ochre because that's darker I'm just putting that down there and then I'm going to take some of the ochre on what I've already just worked over here. Just a little bit of that. A little bit of that. A little bit of that. All right, look at, look at that. So many variations, so many shapes. So much going on. I don't even know where to start. But this, <clears throat> this is a journey of art. This is a journey of where we are and what's going on. This is our exploration. And I love this exploration. And I'm, I can't even tell you, like, how happy it makes me to be able to do these kinds of things. Um, not just with all of you, but just in general. I, I love creating art. I like the experience of making something interesting, of exploring new spaces, of creating new things. And that's what we're doing. We're creating new things. So, meet my friend Metallic Gold. This is from Shuttle Art Acrylic Paint Vintage Color Set. This is Metallic Gold. Why do I have Metallic Gold, you might ask? Um, because I'm actually going to start to add shine to very specific spots of armor. Now, this is not going to be the first, okay, this is not going to be the last time I add gold to this, but it is the first time right now because I need to start doing some defining. So right now I'm just going to kind of spread some of that on. Uh, we're going to be coming through this and darkening it again. This is going to be a multi-pass scenario. And because this is a multi-pass scenario, I'm not going to be really 
light about. It. Well, I'm not going to be really heavy about it. We have so much to do. So much to do. Because there's so much to do, we have to just do it. Do it, do it, do it. And as you can see, um, I'm, I'm adding some of this gold but then I'm actually just kind of spreading it. And one of the things that I'm going to be doing uh, in the near future is I'm going to be going back in with blacks and other colors. And we're going to take some of this luster away. And when we take some of that luster away, it's going to start making, again, multi-dimensional color. Because that is really what our goal is right now. Multi-dimensionality. We want this to be intricate. We want it to be beautiful. And that is exactly what we're going to end up with, is something intricate and beautiful. And you know what, actually, I'm not even going to make that claim. I'm going to take that claim back. I can't tell you it's going to be beautiful, but what I can tell you is it's going to be something that I'm going to be proud of. Because as an artist, that's the one thing that is a guarantee. You can be proud of your work. There isn't anyone who can take that away from you we are able to just be proud of our work and i'm going to add these here i'm going to clean this up of course right now it's not very clean but we kind of have like these gold bands at the end of the scarf these beautiful gold bands at the end of the scarf and I've added a bunch of gold now to this but because I've added a bunch of gold now to this I now have to do the difficult part of getting some more black because we can't let it sit like this we cannot getting some more black beginning to break down what we've added you're gonna be like oh no don't do that yes do that <laughs> that's what we gotta do we gotta do that we gotta make something amazing and then we have to really hone in on what it is oh oh goodness Let me fix that really quick. There we go. Oh, the palette? You want to see this palette? Because this is such 
Like, hold on, look at that. So right now this palette, that's everything I'm mixing. These are all my colors that I'm mixing. <laughs> and I, you can see where I'm making my mid-tones and everything on it. <laughs> and just like doing my, my uh, mixing and everything. Because we need a bunch of different colors and we don't have them. Uh, so this is what we do. And this thing cleans up remarkably well. It cleans up so very well. Um, and I, I try to have, like, so a lot of my primary colors are here. So we have our, our white and our amethyst. And so down here we have our yellow ochre, and here's our vermilion, and here's our gold, and our ash, and our gray, and our lemon yellow, and our flame yellow. Um, and this is all the stuff that I'm mixing. <clears throat> That's going to give us this wonderful product. Uh, you know, and... That's, in the end, what this is, is a wonderful product of our art and our craft. So, I'm just proud of it. And, you know, we're, we're just doing that now. Like, building up something which is remarkable. But, yes, so I'm going to go ahead and if you... Uh, if you've seen the links for my Amazon storefront, let me go ahead and recommend these palettes to you. Uh, they are good. They are so good. I cannot speak highly enough of them. And uh, I will probably tell you a whole lot more about not just these palettes, but about the other things that I use. So as you can see now, I'm, I'm kind of working some more of the black back on top. So this is the ash black. And I'm working it back in to uh, the armor where I've added all of that metallic gold. And, and that's just like our next big step here is working that in and starting to create areas of defined shape and shadow. Multi-dimensional color. Multi-dimensional color. Because that is something we cannot forget. It is unbelievably important. But it's really starting, again, to make everything pop. To make everything really interesting. And as you can see, I can kind of lightly layer it down um, and this ash black layers so well but our character is now getting this really cool uh, again highly defined uh, visual aesthetic and I'm going to take some of this black and I'm going to carefully add it to the end of the scarf okay that could have been more careful but you know what? I don't mind it. Don't mind it at all. Because it's just adding more visual interest to the scarf. And you know what? Because I did that there, let's go ahead. So I'm just going to stipple down. And as I do that, I'm adding another black line there. There we go. So now there's this kind of gold band, band, black band, gold band, black band on the scarf. It's got the red stripe in the middle and the red body, that vermilion body. And we have this really cool design now. It looks very intentional. It looks not just intentional, but this is, you know, something that someone had to have designed for our character. Just giving that extra layer of depth to their existence, to their life. Because, you know, I, of course, I'm a storyteller, and I don't always have a story for every art piece, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a story 
for every character. Does my character have a name? Oh, I love that question. So this character currently is unnamed. Let's change that. Let's change that. Let's come up with a story as we go. I mean, we know that our character here has, you know, this uh, beautiful scarf, this beautiful sword, this long dramatic hair, this gown, kind of this dress gown. So what's our character's name? What's our character's reason? So one of the things when you're doing character design is, um, you know, kind of building something uh, semi-organically. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do character design. So let me start off with that. There's a lot of ways to do this. But you want their physical aspects and their costume to start to tell a story. So what is the story of this character? Well, let's see. Let's work it out. And uh, while I'm at that, I'm going to take some of this ochre and then some of this gray. Make a different shade. So here's that next shade I'm mixing. Let me show you right there. Hopefully you can see that. Ooh, right there. Next shade. So what is our character's name and what is their story? Hmm. Maybe. You know what? Let's let's avoid too many tropes. Uh, we're not gonna go the way of like the reluctant hero or anything. Maybe this is just a work-a-day kind of character. Their, their job involves this life they have, this existence as an armed and armored champion. And maybe more than that, maybe... Maybe they also have a different dream and a different goal. Maybe that scarf was a gift. Maybe that scarf was a gift from someone important to them. A beautiful scarf to keep them warm on this frontier that they work on. I mean, an, a soldier or a knight or person at arms they need to stay warm in the field they need to be in a place so maybe their partner gave them this scarf stay warm while you're out there stay warm when you're protecting and doing your duty standing watch at your post Maybe that red has something to do with it. Maybe that red has something to do with their story. Sorry, I'm already getting off a, just a mental tangent here, but... You know, there's actually a lot we can explore just by trying to figure out who they are and what their name is. I have so many characters that live in so many stories and so many books. And each one of them has a purpose and an identity and an existence that's oftentimes driven by some grim narrative. But this is not a grim character. This 
is a person. This is a, a person who's cared for enough that someone sent them off to war with a scarf. And maybe the reason their eyes are closed and they're standing here in this windy scene is they're thinking about them. They're in this moment, closing their eyes, far from their home, thinking about someone, remembering someone, being warmed by the gift, having their moment of rest, even a moment of joy remembering a hug or a embrace or a conversation or maybe just a shopping trip where a scarf was bought I think that actually just makes sense to me that scarf is not just anything it's it really is something important You can be a million miles from home, but as long as you have one thing, one thing to hold on to, one thing to remind you of where you came from, of who you are. You can have joy. You can have peace. You can have hope. But what is their name? What a question. What a thought. Laundry, what a joy. What's their hopes and dreams? Maybe their hope is just to complete this task, this outpost mission, to return home and to retire. retire and not have to take up their sword or put on the armor to wear that scarf in better days to find themselves enchanted by life find themselves enamored with existence I can think of a few interesting stories in my mind, and because I can think of those stories, that's playing into my line of thinking. It's also making me wonder. And because I find this kind of peaceful, this reflection that's in the character's moment, there. Their eyes are closed. They're, they're at peace somehow. They don't seem stressed or worried. They just seem contemplative. They should have a peaceful name. They should have a contemplative name. They should have... Something light. 
And though it seems so remarkably simplistic, I think that a really good name would be something that would play upon that happiness, that looking forward, that what will be. So I have some ideas. And in those ideas, I am totally willing to take criticism. But my first idea, which is not necessarily the best, I like the idea of joy. It's very simplistic, but it actually gets across to a very root, very simple story. Joy is what they're holding on to, and joy is what they will have, and joy will be there tomorrow. But maybe... That's too simple. Maybe that's too simple. Maybe that moment of peace isn't in regards to what's coming tomorrow. Maybe that moment of peace is just in knowing that no matter what comes tomorrow, they still have what was. Hope. I do like hope. Hope and joy. Hope is a very good name. And actually, I will say this. Hope is getting a little closer to uh, very, very um, fantasy-sounding name. Maybe we need to be less. Well, you know what? I don't need to. I don't need to think about it too hard. I am going to. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that concept. Um, I'm going to take that concept. I'm going to go with it. And you know what? Uh, because this is ultimately a live stream. And we have an idea that a, that apparently is is agreed upon. Uh, we're just going to go with that. We're going to take hope. Hope definitely sounds like a good name for this character, and you know that's it's part of the experience, and it's part of the joy of live streaming. The joy of live streaming. Oh my goodness, that was a little on the nose, um, but it's part of that joy and that enjoyment. And um, that's what we're going to go with. So here we have Hope somewhere out in a frontier fort. Not fort exactly, but maybe a castle, maybe a stronghold, maybe on some foreign campaign for their people. And what Hope is thinking about right now is tomorrow. And hoping that tomorrow they get to return. It is actually kind of an old name. Old kind of name. Yeah, hope. It does, it has, the, it has that proper sound to it, you know? It has that um, proper flavor. Hope, sitting, dreaming, waiting for tomorrow, waiting for what will come, believing, and very rightly so, that they'll go home, see their partner, the one who gave them their wonderful scarf. Knowing that tomorrow might not be a guarantee, but 
They believe it to be so. They believe in their tomorrow. They believe in what could be. Hope. Because they believe it. Because they know it's possible. Hope can close their eyes. Hope can see the possibilities of tomorrow. And the very real chance that when these stormy skies they stand in part we'll go home and they'll be happy And there's something that I can't not do. Because that red is now really important. That red is so important that I have to incorporate it into a few other spots on this armor. Because that red is symbolic. It's an important thing for the character. I'd like to thank you so very much for being here, for joining, not just in this live stream, but in all of the adventures that we share. And uh, I'm actually going to say that I, I think in many ways this is a completed piece. It might have taken not one, but two visits to it to get to the end, but we did. And then when we got there, we discovered just how beautiful it was. And it is beautiful. And I'm glad we could share it. More than being glad that we could share it, I'm also glad that we could explore and come up with such a wonderful thing together. Now I would be remiss if I just stopped right here, right now. There's just two more things I'm going to do. The first is I'm going to say, please stay tuned for even more wonderful art in 2023. Because it is coming, and it is going to be a great time. We are going to have a wonderful time together. I hope that I see you for lots more art. Don't forget that uh, you can sign up to my art workshops on my website. Um, also, well, there's a, well, on my website, you're going to find the link for Eventbrite. I will get that all sorted out. Don't worry. We're going to make it all work. All right. Now that I've done that, we just have, <laughs> you have an awesome night. There's exactly one thing left I want to do. So hold on. 
because this is not something that I do very often. Great, it is a great painting. That's pretty. Good. So this is not something I do very often, but. And it's not very neat. You know what? That's fine. We got an MM right there. Uh, so these paints are not the best for signing, but you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. MM23. Is it neat? No. Do I care? Not that much, actually, because they're there. <laughs> you saw it here. So if anyone ever tries to show you a painting that looks like this in the future and it doesn't have that messy little MM23 that I just did live with these these acrylic paints, you know it's, it's not genuine. <laughs> That's how you're going to know. So here is Hope. Hope is our first completed painting of 2023. It took two weeks to get to this point. Well, two Saturdays. Um, two live streams to get here. But oh my goodness, it was so much fun. I want you to take care, to go into your year with hope, much like our wonderful, do you get a certificate of authenticity if you buy? Uh, you know what? I don't have those yet, but we're going to we're gonna make something like that happen. Um, I don't have those. That's a great question. Thank you. I do not have those just yet. Uh, but we're going to make something like that happen. That's going to be something that we're going to make happen. Thank you for that question. <laughs> I want you to go into the rest of 2023 hopeful like our character Hope, uh, looking forward to their future, remembering the past, but ultimately knowing that it's, it's about what comes. It's about what comes, not what's been. Take care, be excellent. And this one's, this original is definitely gonna go up on the website very soon. Uh, this is going to be for sale. We're going to sell the first painting of 2023. Take care. Be excellent. I will see you all again very soon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. This has been your Saturday night. Bye, everybody.